Oh shit, that was a surprise, but maybe not so much. Hey everyone, this is Gabriel Benjamin here, sharing some of my thoughts about today's stage up the Col de Granon. Um, this mountain pass hasn't been used in the Tour de France since 1986. Uh, and interestingly enough, a similar thing happened that day. A very dominant uh, man in the yellow jersey, Bernard Hinault, uh, was beaten by Greg LeMond. Um, today, the seemingly unbeatable Tade Pogacar uh, took a huge blow to his tour. And Jonas Vin Vingegaard, or Vingigo, I think is pronounced, uh, won the stage, took over the yellow jersey, uh, put in a big chunk of time with a great attack uh, about halfway up the climb, which is later than where we typically see riders attack these days. A lot of times everyone's going so fast and the pacing and the, everything's so dialed that there's only attacks in the last two or one kilometers. Um, but today's stage was particularly hard. It was hot. The altitude was quite high, higher than typical Tour de France climbs, which a lot of the mountaintop finishes in the Alps are at about 6,000 feet. Uh, today's stage finished just a hair below eight, and it went well above eight doing the mighty Col de Galibier. So brutal day out there. And I had predicted when I talked about La Planche de Belfi that Pogacar would win that stage, which he did. And I also predicted that if he dominated this stage, that the tour would most likely be over. And the opposite happened. So now we have a race on our hands, which is super cool. Um, I hope that they don't wait another, um, how many years has it been? Almost 20 years, <laughs> 40 years? No, 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 it's, uh, in 2026, it will be 40 year anniversary of the Col de Granon where Le Monde took over the yellow. Um, Okay, I hope that they don't wait um, that long to bring back the Col de Granon. It's, it's an awesome climb. It's high altitude. It's super beautiful. It's a small road. Uh, it's 9% average, which is a lot higher than the typical uh, Alpine tour averages. And I'm not sure why they haven't used it. Maybe it's not the I ideal place for, for staging uh, of the, you know, the podium ceremony and all that stuff. But uh, if it's a coal, that means it's a pass, which maybe they could just use it even just to, to go over and finish on another um, ski resort uh, where the village pays the premium price that the tour requires to host a finish. But anyway, I'd love to see it every year in the tour. It's such a, a epic climb. And, and these days with how light the bikes are, with how good the riders are at training, uh, training with power, fueling perfectly, uh, you need really, really decisive climbs like this to see exciting racing. If if climbs allow for more drafting, uh, if they're lower altitude, if, you know, X, Y, and Z, um, the field doesn't break up as much. You see what we often see, which is an attack in the last two or, or even final kilometer for people to take small margins, you know, 15, 20, 30 seconds. Whereas this was classic Tour de France, uh, somebody flipping the race, taking several minutes it's very exciting and now it's a wide open race um if i had to bet my money today as to who's going to win i would say uh Vingigo has the strongest team he's showing the best form uh pogachar he could rebound and he's better at the time trial than Vingigo, but not that much not not close enough to to bring back minutes um, provided these guys are maintaining form and not having accidents. So I am very excited to see what happens. There is also the, the possibility of COVID positives, which will take uh, riders out of the race and uh, crashes um, X, Y, and Z. Uh, you know, if, if Pojagar can crack, um, there's no reason why another rider can't. There, there's some big names uh, such as Bardet and... Um, uh, Garrett Thomas, who could theoretically win this tour. I'm not putting my money on them, but there's a very hard stage tomorrow uh, to Alpe d'Huez. They do the other side of the Galibier, the Quad de Fer. There's three HC climbs that they're doing, and it's going to be a continued uh, heat wave. Uh, it's looking like hot weather in the Pyrenees as well, and those stages are completely savage. I've ridden uh, most of the climbs 
on those stages and I'll do a, a talk about that next week. But, um, and the TT, it's still a very wide open tour and I'm hoping that it's very exciting. I'm hoping that we don't see big hitters uh, lose the ability to battle because of crashes and or illness. And I would like to see it tight and exciting all the way down to the final kilometer. So um, looks like we have a race on our hands. Thanks so much for checking in. Uh, if you like what I do, please like, subscribe, and share, and leave your comments below. Let me know what your thoughts are and what your predictions are in this tour. I, um, I'm no longer longingly waiting for the Vuelta. I'm excited for the race we have right now. Dan, 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 dan. Wow.